All right, welcome to Right On with John Crane. I hope you guys are doing great. What I have here is this 12 inch disc sander. This is a Rockwell Delta disc sander. These are great, very sturdy, very strong. I picked this up at an auction a while back over in Seattle there, pre-COVID days, uh, you know, back when I could get a haircut here. I think I got to pick up some trimmers or something and uh, cut the hair myself, right? So anyway, right, I get this home, I plug it in, I go to turn it on, I ordered up some discs for this, right? And uh, hit the button and nothing, right? It doesn't work. So I think I have an idea here of what is going on. So uh, let's diagnose this and see if we can get it running. All right, I'm gonna give you the full meal deal here. I got this plugged in. And when I go to hit the start button here, I just want you to take a listen to when I hit the start button. Hear that buzzing noise? Right, a little flicker of the lights, buzzing noise. That, to me, indicates the capacitor. I'm thinking this is a bad capacitor on here. That often happens when there's not enough current to start up the motor. Now, this is a start capacitor in this motor here. So let's pop that out and see what we can do. All right, for those of you wondering what we're running here, this is a Rockwell motor here. It's actually made by Baldor. This is an 82-041. And we're running at 1725 RPM. It's a one horsepower motor, 60 hertz, 115 to 30. We're running at 115 and we're drawing 18 amps there. I'm gonna pop the cover off here where this start capacitor is, All right? Now I already took this off earlier and diagnosed this, right? All right, here is our capacitor, right? Now you gotta be very careful when you uh, go messing with these capacitors because these can be charged and usually they are, right? This holds a charge here and this gives current here to start this motor. This is a starting capacitor. And so what I found earlier is I took this off and I could see, right, this is a ball door capacitor, but boy, you can barely make out what is going on here on the label. Actually, I, I couldn't read it. I could hardly make out what the heck is going on there. So what I did was I called that ball door. I gave them all the information there on the motor and they told me the right capacitor to get. Right now, this capacitor that I got here, it's actually a little bit smaller, but it will do the same job here. This capacitor for this motor right here is 850 to 1020 microfarads. That's actually what that little UF is right there. So it's 110 to 120 volts, right? 60 Hertz there. And uh, so that was great. I called that Baldor and uh, the guy gave me all the information there for a new capacitor. And I just ordered this one off of Amazon, but to replace this capacitor, right? What you gotta do to take the charge out of this capacitor is usually you just take a screwdriver here and you touch it across the two leads just like that, right? This one's already has no charge in it here, but let's see if there's a little charge in this capacitor. Nothing, right? And that's also a sign there that this capacitor is no good, right? It's not holding any any kind of charge there. But that is how you discharge a capacitor there. I don't know if you could see me doing that, but what you wanna do is take the screwdriver and go across the two leads right here. And you wanna, that will discharge a capacitor just like that by putting something metal across the two terminals right here. And you can see here, that these are soldered on. So what I am going to do is I'm gonna cut those off. I'm gonna put some crimp on connectors so I can attach that right to these capacitor leads right here. All right, I'll bring you in here for the bird's eye view and we already discharged this capacitor, but we'll do it again just to make sure because uh, right, that can uh, throw you across the room right there. All right, so now I'll come in and I'll snip these off. All right, bing. And bing, there we go, All right? And I'll come in uh, with the wire stripper here. This is a cheapy, but boy, it is a great wire stripper. You just put this in right here, 
right? Boom. And boom, just like that, right? And what I've got here is a couple of these female spade terminal connectors here. And what I'll do is I'll take the crimper and these linesman's pliers and I'll load this in. And uh, these are solid all the way around. Sometimes there's a little split in here and usually I put the split right at the tip of this crimper. But this, there's no split in there, so you can put this in any configuration. So I load that into the linesman's pliers, and then I take our, our wire here, poke that in just like that, and give that a nice crimp. All right, and I'll double check that connection. That looks nice and strong there. I'll do the same here for the other one. Load this into the crimper first. And I'll come in. Sometimes you gotta give that wire a little bit of a twist and then poke that again into our little spade there. Give that a nice crimp and boom. There we go, right? All right, now I'll hook this up to a capacitor. Excellent. All right, next step is to plug in the sander here and see what we got. And see if that did it. Let's check it out. Start capacitor. You hear that buzzing noise, right? A lot of times that is the capacitor. Right on, right on. That's awesome. All right, I'm just gonna put this cover back on here, but before I do, I'm gonna wrap this with a little felt to keep this uh, capacitor from vibrating in there. And uh, right, just again, to explain there, if you need to replace a capacitor there, the information that you need to convey to order a new one is the microfarads. And again, this is 850 to 1020, and you need the voltage, right? This is uh, 110, 125 volts. So that is the information that you need to get off of the capacitor, obviously, right? I couldn't read it on that one. I called up Baldor. They were super helpful. You can also take the information off the motor there and you can do some calculations and figure out the sizing of the capacitor that way. All right, so I'm gonna take this felt here. I'm gonna give this a couple wraps around. I think about that long. Just snip this off. Let me see, and I got some electrical tape, so I'm gonna wrap this one, two, and then come in with some electrical tape. And remember, right, while I'm holding this, this capacitor does have a charge in it, right? So if I was to put that screwdriver across those tips there, you would see some sparks and it would discharge. All right, just like that. And then we'll come in with the cover. And that is a nice fit inside that cover there. No rattling, shaking, right? This, uh, obviously these sanders, right? There's a lot of vibration.
together. Remember uh, Hannibal there on the A-team, right? The old A-team, right? B.A. Baracus, Mr. T in there driving the van, right? All right. Well, that was great, you know? All it was was a, uh, a capacitor there, star capacitor. Hopefully you guys uh, can see now how to replace one of these. 20 bucks, right? Machine's up and running, and I did a little extra bonus work there, just cleaning up the table here getting this all nice uh, and clean, getting the rust off of there. All right, right on. I hope you guys enjoyed this video here and I'll see y'all soon. All right, right on. All right, John Crane here in the shop. And I just wanna give a big thank you to all the people who help support my channel by either uh, liking or subscribing or leaving a comment in the comment section there. That really goes a long ways to help out my channel. And if you'd like to support even more, I have a Patreon link that's in the description of this video here. And then also on my website, I have the Patreon link there on my website as well, but I also have the Right On store and I'm starting to sell different products in the store there, such as this utility dop kit type bag. I got lots of different bags there. I got some John Crane, Right On John Crane stickers that I have in the store. And I'm starting to put up all kinds of different products there. And then also I have the tool list of all the tools in my bag and that's a Amazon affiliate link. So if you click on anything that's in the tool list on my website, it brings you over to Amazon. And then if you buy it through that portal, I get a few cents for each purchase of uh, each tool you buy there. So it's not much, but it surely does help uh, support the channel here. And I just wanna say, I really appreciate uh, anybody who wants to support the channel there. All right, I hope you guys are great and I'll see you soon. Right on.